All right, everyone, welcome to another Chem Complete lesson. And in today's lesson, we have the long awaited second practice session for aromatic, anti aromatic, or non aromatic compounds. So, just a brief reminder this is not going to teach you all of the rules behind aromaticity. I do have a lecture for that on the channel, and it'll be linked in the description. Okay. There's also uh, going to be a point in this lesson where we come across nitrogens involved in the ring and we will have to know whether they're sp2 or sp3. I have also made a separate video on that and that helps to explain when you want nitrogens to be considered sp2 hybridized and when they're sp3 hybridized to clear up any confusion. All right. Now this is a continuation of the first practice session. It was one of the more popular videos on the channel. So I'm going to try to do these occasionally where we do some aromatic practice. And finally, I do have a full aromatic course coming out uh, sometime probably in early 2020. It is going to cover everything, reactions of aromatics, classification of aromatics, naming aromatics, similar to the unknown spectroscopy course and the substitution course that I'm going through right now. All right, so let's get started with our practice session. So here are the first two. We're going to do a total of six. Now, remember that when we start looking at these, there's a couple rules that they have to follow or certain categories they have to fall into in order to be considered aromatic. And that is the first thing we are looking for, these compounds must be cyclic. So we have to meet that check mark. Okay, after that, they have to be conjugated and planar. Now, when we say that, that essentially means that you have to have p orbitals overlapping at every point around the cyclic system. So this would mean you cannot have any sp3 hybridized atoms that are hanging out in the cyclic uh, component of the aromatic system. And then finally, the last thing we need to do is we need to meet Huckel's rule. And Huckel's rule states that you're going to have 4n plus 2, and you set that equal to your pi electrons that you would count up in the cyclic system only. And n, when you solve for n, it must be a whole integer which can include zero. Okay, so if you pass this test, if you pass all of these, then it's going to be considered aromatic. If you fail one of these first two steps, okay, or might have, I may have broken it down with planar being an extra one, but if you fail anything up through Huckel's rule, it'll be considered non-aromatic, and then if you pass all of those others, but you fail Huckel's rule, at that point you will be anti-aromatic. Okay? And in terms of stability, aromatic is best. Non-aromatic tends to be indifferent. Uh, they're not particularly stable or unstable relative to aromatics. And then the anti-aromatic compounds are very highly unstable. And the reason for that is that they um, are usually locked into position. Uh, due to the cyclic system and the conjugation. However, when you look at their pi electron arrangement, it starts going into the non-bonding and the anti-bonding orbitals. So that's a bit of molecular orbital theory. That's what's so destabilizing. All right, so let's take a look at some of these examples. So the first two, we have cyclic met in each case. Now, when we start looking at the um, conjugation, we want to check that every point around the system is involved in a pi bond or has some potential for a p orbital, whether it be a lone pair on a hetero atom or it can be a carbocation. There has to be something that allows for a p orbital to be present. All right, so in this example, we take a look at each point. Those are both involved in a pi bond. This point and this point, that's involved in a pi bond. This point, this point, this point, this point, yes, yes, yes. So these are all involved in pi bonds. And because of that, we are going to meet the planar requirement, okay? And we are going to meet the conjugation. So this is cyclic, okay? And then conjugated, yes, along with planar. And then the question will be, does it pass Huckel's rule? So for Huckel's rule, you're gonna count up. We have five pi bonds here times two pi electrons for each one. So that's going to be a total of 10 pi electrons. So if I plug that in and I start looking to solve for 4n plus 2 equals 10, 
then when I divide through, I'm going to see that uh, 2 from the 10 is going to give me 8, so it'll be 4n equals 8, and then n is going to equal 2, so I do pass, and this compound would be labeled as aromatic. Now, when I come to this next one, I have already determined that it is cyclic. So now the question is, is it conjugated at each point? So we have yes, 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 but this is a problem because this tip right here is just a carbon with two hydrogens. There are no lone pairs of electrons that could participate in the delocalization system and create a p orbital there. So because we have the presence of an sp3 hybridized carbon, that's going to ruin us at the second step. So we do not get full conjugation. And remember, if we fail the conjugation step, this is going to be classified as a non-aromatic system. Okay? The only time it's going to be anti is if we get through all of them, but then fail the pi electron check with Huckel's rule. And a brief reminder, there is no need, once you've done this, to go through Huckel's rule. We already have the classification of non-aromatic. It wouldn't serve any use going through past that point particularly on an exam or a quiz where you're timed. All right, now here are the examples with the nitrogen that I spoke of. So a lot of students, they get confused when they see this nitrogen or something similar, and they say, is it sp2 or sp3? And usually it has to do with aromatic or resonance topics that come up in class. And the answer is, if the nitrogen's lone pair can participate in the resonance system, it will due to delocalization. Okay, so particularly in a case like this, it's going to be able to contribute to the system and it will help create something that would have been anti-aromatic and produce an aromatic, or it could have been non-aromatic, but it upgrades it to aromatic, right? Because if it was sp3, it would be non-aromatic. So is it cyclic? Yes, we do meet that checkpoint. Now, this is the one where we have to be careful. Is there conjugation at each point? The double bonds are obvious. Yes, there's p orbitals there. So is this contained in a p orbital? And the answer is yes. If this was sp3, then in that case, we would not have these lone pairs inside the ring, and they would not be contributing to the overall conjugation. However, because the contr contribution of two additional electrons would make this aromatic, this will become sp2, and we will see this type of behavior for the complete conjugation. So conjugation gets a check mark here. Now what's important is because we're putting these into the sp2, you have to count them for the pi electrons. Right? So when we get ready to have a system like this, we're going to have 4n plus 2 equals 6 because each double bond contributes 2 and then the nitrogen contributes the last 2. All right, so 6 minus 2 is going to be 4, so we're going to look at 4n, 4, and then n equals 1. So we're good to go here. This would be an aromatic classification. All right, so the next one here, somewhat similar. We have this lone pair, okay, and it is in direct contact with the ability to perform resonance, right, where the ring could dump the lone pair out onto one of the carbons. So because it can participate in this resonance, we would again figure that this is going to be sp2 hybridized. You have to see whether it's directly next to pi bonds and it can participate in the resonance. So is this cyclic? Yes. Do we have conjugation at all points? Yes. Okay. And then do we pass Huckel's rule? So 4n plus 2 is going to be equal to 4 in this case because we've got the 2 from the double bond and then the 2 from the nitrogen. So 4 minus 2 is 2, so 4n equals 2, n is going to equal 1 half, 2 fourths, 1 half. So this would be anti-aromatic because we pass the others. However, in a case like this, we did not pass Huckel's rule. So that would not be a stable compound. All right. Now for the last two. Take a look here. Are we cyclic? Yes. Okay. Are we conjugated? Let's look. Double bond, double bond, double bond, 
double bond, double bond, double bond. So yes, at all points we are conjugated. There are no sp3 carbons there. Now, when we continue, we go 4n plus 2 equals 8. Well, we've already seen an example similar to this, right? Um, in one of the, actually we haven't in this particular lecture. I was thinking, I, it's probably the lecture before this. So if we look at this, okay, 8 minus 2 is going to be 6. So we've got 4n equals 6, and then n equals 3 halves. So again, this is problematic for stability. This would get ranked as anti-aromatic. All right, and then finally, we have a three-membered ring, and we have a cation here. Now, when you have a cation, okay, you've lost a set of electrons, and instead of sp3, you go into an sp2 state. So while there are no pi electrons here, this cation is particularly stable because it goes into a p orbital that's in conjugation, right? It's resonance stabilized with that pi bond down there. So is this cyclic? Yes, it is. Is this conjugated? Yes, it is, because the carbocation is going to be in a p orbital, that empty slot that's looking for electrons. And so then let's solve for this. 4n plus 2 equals 2, because we only have the double bond. So 2 minus 2 is 0, so 4n equals 0. 0 divided by 4 is 0. So yes, that is an integer that counts, and we would be aromatic in a case like this. All right, guys, hopefully this review session was helpful. Uh, go back and watch the first one if you haven't come across it yet. It will give you more practice. And again, check the description because I will leave links to um, the aromatic classification video where you have to learn more about Huckel's rule and the breakdown of all of that. So uh, like if the video was helpful, comments. I will always interact with the channel. I'll try to take suggestions, um, and I appreciate the support. If you subscribe, you'll be up to date with all the content that I'm releasing throughout the semester. And as always, head on over to chemcomplete.com. We now have our website up and running. We've got free resources available for download there. There are very detailed walkthrough guides for $5 a piece that you can download to support the channel. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one individual mentoring or private videos that I make regarding individual questions you have. So if you're struggling with a specific concept, if you can't solve a certain type of spectroscopy, if you have problems you want addressed, contact me and we can work something out that's affordable because I know you, most of you guys are students and you're on a budget. So with that all being said, go over to chemcomplete.com, check us out, and I will see everybody for the next video. As always, thanks for learning with us.